Hi guys, how's it going? It's Jamie, your crafty DIY guy, and I'm back. I have got some easy home decor items for you today. Um, they don't really fall into any kind of a category. I could see where some of them could go very farmhouse. Some of them could be modern. Some of them could be industrial. I try to keep things, you know, kind of level. I would say that my design aesthetic is, is definitely transitional, and uh, that's kind of what I tend to uh, design for. Um, I am excited because, um, one, you may have seen that new intro video. How cool was that? So I'm pretty excited about that. And then also I'm excited because I'm over the 10,000 mark. And uh, again, I am blown away. And thank you all so much for being subscribers and for supporting the channel. My OGs that have been with me since I had like one subscriber. Thank you. Um, I wish I would have like wrote down who my very first subscriber was because I think it'd be cool to, you know, to do something. But uh, again, if you are a new subscriber, thank you so much and welcome. And if you've been referred to the channel by YouTube or by a friend, thank you again for checking it out. I hope you'll stick around and you'll like the projects that we're working on. So rather than me rambling, 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 let's get to the stuff. <laughs> All right, everyone, for our first project today, you are going to use two of these glass skinny candle holders from Dollar Tree. You're also going to grab two of your Eco Buddies wood plates. If you don't have any Eco Buddies wood plates on hand, then definitely check out the link below in my description box. Um, it will include a link on where you can buy these on Amazon. They are great for crafts, they are good to eat on. They're 100% birch wood and they're disposable. You can literally throw this away when you're done with it. You're gonna grab some of these wood blocks from Dollar Tree and also some shower curtain rings. Go ahead and open up your shower ring and just clip off this uh, one little peg here. Um, I don't know what it's called. Clip off that thing that you just saw me clip off. <laughs> and then the idea is you're going to glue it to the side of your plate. Now you will wanna go ahead and manipulate and play around with that shower ring just a little bit. Um, go ahead and stretch it out a little bit without breaking it and then add some hot glue on either side of it and glue it directly down onto that plate and hold it really tightly until it dries. That is probably the most tedious part about this project, but it will work wonders when it's done. Once your shower curtain is completely dry on the side of your plate, then you can take your plate, gently flip it upside down. I suggest doing this on the side of a table and glue your four blocks to the bottom Take it outside, spray paint everything one color, and this is what it looks like when it's all done. I love these. They're super transitional. They could go great with industrial, great with farmhouse. You could paint these like a pewter color. They'd look like they were metal. A lot of different options available for these. I love them. For our next project, you are going to need four Dollar Tree frames. Um, you can really do this in any size that you want. I'm grabbing the three and a half by five size. Also, you're gonna grab an assortment of Dollar Tree rocks and some different succulent plants. I'm also gonna be using this E6000 Quick Hold for the first time, so I'll tell you how good I think this is. So go ahead and remove all the guts from your picture frames, and uh, you will be keeping the glass in there. You'll notice that your glass has some of these uh, pesky little marks on them. That is from the uh, matting that they include in these frames and uh, for some reason they glue them to the glass. So just go ahead and grab a razor from Dollar Tree and scrape those off. Do this gently and uh, you'll be perfectly fine with the way that they look when they are done. I then added some hot glue in the corners of my frame. As you can see, the glue is not really gonna show out. Um, I would suggest that you go very lightly on this part. I can tend to be a little heavy handed when it comes to my glue. But um, again, if you just kind of squeeze in the middle and then drag your glue gun down, that will give you enough glue to be able to secure that glass into place. Also, while everything is drying, take one of your frame backs, just remove everything from it and then touch it up if you need to or want to with some chalk paint. I'm just doing this because this will serve as the base of my terrarium. Well, the moment we've all been waiting for using that E6000 um, Quick Hold. This is a new product for me. I'm not sure if you've seen this before or not. So go ahead and add some E6000 to the frame and then also um, a little bit on the edge there basically where you're going to be joining your corners of the frames. I do recommend putting that cap back on because it does like to ooze out. 
And then after you've done this, I would hold it for just a few minutes and then set them aside. I would say that both of these dried within 45 minutes of each other, and then I was able to manipulate them and uh, glue them together into my box, kind of like you see here, which was great. As you know, E6000 can take a little while. So for the base of the terrarium, I'm using that piece of the frame back that I mentioned earlier, just trim it down to size. And then once everything is dried, you can start adding in your rocks and your plants. For mine, I wanted to go ahead and add some white rocks to kind of to give me beach and then some of the darker rocks to kind of give me the ruggedness of the coastline, we'll say. And then I went through and I added some plants and then also kind of sprinkled some of those other smaller rocks kind of on both sides of this, just kind of creating the environment that you like really. And then for my finishing touch, I added in a Dollar Tree candle holder and this is what it looks like all lit up on my desk. And then I finally made it into the bathroom with it. And again, I absolutely love this. It's the perfect addition to my bathroom. It still gives me some light and some nice ambiance. And uh, I just think it's really cool looking. And for our last project, this Dollar Tree Abacus, you are going to take some of these wooden beads that you can find in the hair bow section. They come in a pack of 20. You're also going to grab one of these clear frames from Dollar Tree. Um, they're, they're decorative, as you can see. They don't have a back on them, and that's the one that you're going to need. You're also going to grab some bamboo skewers and then some wood blocks. I'm using six of the Jenga pieces and two of these smaller square ones. First, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the part of the base of the abacus. So um, kind of like I had there, just glue two of the blocks together end to end, and then glue one in the middle, and then glue the smaller block on the top. I kind of think of this as, uh, they kind of remind me of a boat for some reason. So um, glue them together like you see here. And if it doesn't remind you of a boat, then pick something that it reminds you of. <laughs> After you've got those feet together, go ahead and just uh, set those aside, let those dry. Then flip your frame upside down and you're gonna remove the hanging hardware that's attached to the back of this. Now, you'll notice when you do remove this hanging hardware that it does leave quite a large hole in the side of your frame, which just doesn't look cute. So we're gonna address that in just a minute. But first we've gotta break this glass out of the center of this. So hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, and then when it does, break, um, go ahead and clear off any of that loose glass and then flip this frame over. You'll see this track that was left that's kind of what was holding in the glass. That track will be very valuable to you later on, I promise. Um, so go ahead and take your hole filler, speckle, whatever you want to call it. I call it hole filler and uh, fill your holes with it. Um, just go ahead and get this as smooth as possible and let that dry. While that is drying, you can go ahead and glue your feet to the bottom of your abacus, kind of like so. And then uh, you are going to want to pre-cut your sticks. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of eyeballing it and lining it up against the frame itself. And you can see here, obviously I'm not exactly measuring this. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and then marking it with my pencil on where I want to trim all of my other sticks. Now, this is not a legitimate abacus because a legitimate abacus will have um, 10 rows and 10 beads per row, and mine only has five, but it's just for display or you know visual pretty purposes. So go ahead and stain your skewers. I'm just using a Waverly antiquing wax and set those aside, let them dry. I painted my frame with some flat black Rust-Oleum spray paint. Then I went inside and created my skewers. Now you'll notice that a usual, if you're a math wizard out there, you know that a abacus has 10 rows and it also has 10 beads per row. Well, mine is for decorative purposes only. Don't be teaching the kids math on this one. This is just for, you know, pretty. If you did want to make a legitimate abacus though, you could easily do this with 10 skewers and 10 beads per skewer. So you math wizards out there, don't be yelling at me. All right, now once you've got your skewers all set, then you're gonna go ahead and um, fit those within the track on that frame. Now, what I did was I did take my pliers and I just kind of clipped off or just trimmed off or flattened, I flattened it, 
the ends. That way it would fit better within the track itself on the frame. And then I did use a little bit of hot glue where I needed to just to make sure that each skewer row stayed where it was supposed to. So hopefully that all makes sense because when it's done, it will look like this. I think it's super cool. It's definitely got an industrial vibe. It could go farmhouse. It could really be used in a lot of different ways. It's just not good for math. <laughs> not this one anyway. And by the way, how good do these look on top of my desk with those birch tree lights from Jackald? I think that those are such a nice compliment to any decor. They would be fantastic for the holidays. I cannot wait to use them for Christmas. But also, I'm just going to leave them just like this in my office space. And if you're interested in ordering your own set of these LED birch tree lights from Jackald, I will include a link in the description box below. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram.